And mm. I called it the affiliate cash tree because, and I actually wrote about it and wrote how I did it and, and actually gave away exactly how I did it. But it was now like, instead of just monetizing and trying to go for a sale once I've captured these users and now I own that database and mm. I can kick them to many profiles. So what I was doing, you know, and, and what I continue to do in various verticals, um, it's just, you know, set up a campaign to draw like it works very well with Facebook stuff because you just like watch get my guide on five ways. You know, you set up some fake chick on, you know, fan page or whatever. You get some fans and then you just I mean, that naturally you boost that post. And for like, you know, uh, 20 bucks, you'll get a thousand people in that funnel. Um, mm. Facebook stuff is amazing. You know, when you boost a post um, in there, just the the response for I'm sure it's in the lead gen space. It's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that's something right now that's not going to last like everything else we do. Um, you know, Facebook will pick up on it and they don't like it for whatever reason. And, you know, it won't exist. Um, but yeah, that's something hot right now. So really all of my stuff right now is more focused on funnels. Um, there's like if shoemoney.com, if you go there, you sign up and actually if you go to shoemoney.com, yeah, if you get there, I'm going to give you like my whole shoe money system, which I sold for like two grand years ago. Um, and it's, it's great. You know, it's a great product. And I'm going to give that to you right away for free. Give you username and login, go through there, do all this stuff. But then I'm going to kick you to web hosting, which I get like a hundred bucks. If you sign up for that, I'm going to kick you to, you know, like I'll install your blog for you. I'm sure you've seen that. Um, mm -hmm. for, you know, I'll, here's what I use. Here's a webinar I did and people ask me what I use and I use go to webinar, you know, you get 130 bucks. People sign up for that. So it's just like you give people value, but in giving them value about talking about what you do, how you've made money, just mm -hmm. having the normal links that you would normally link to these things as if, I mean, I normally would link to go to webinar if I'm talking about it, but by right. using your affiliate link to go to it, now you're getting kickback. So the whole thing now of how I've my evolution of affiliate marketing is it's so much bigger to have. And we've done this in the electronic cigarette space. And I mean, we've been affiliates for about anything you can imagine. And, but it's more about us building that database because I mean, you can actually like build a legit, um, we actually had a dating company that bought the dating site because of that database. You know, mm. and I mean, now you have something that has a huge valuation because those guys pay like two bucks a lead. Well, you've got a database of a couple hundred thousand leads, you know, people that came there, they want a dating advice, you build a relationship with them. And so, you know, they are like, hmm, you know, and so that's another reason why the my newest company exists is because that's I was like, the way I'm doing it now is through like this you know, this blogger email service and I don't have any control, like, you know, the spam right. stuff, the rest of it. So I built my own email platform and then did it for one company came to us and said, you know, we'd like you to take over our email. And so we did it and they were like, wow, you know, like you should make a company out of this. So did. Wow. Curious. Like, so, you know, one of the questions that was about the pigeon cash tree was how long does that take? I mean, like realistically speaking, cause you know, you're a great copywriter. So you can have content, crunched out and you know people people believe you and all that good stuff but when somebody starts out doing what you're trying to do what's the realistic time frame for doing this i mean i mean you should see results pretty soon like you know on a double opt-in our average it takes about it's crazy it can take up to eight hours for people to double opt-in single opt-in mm -hmm. what you know they're in there right away but right. you know to see if it starts making money i mean you know if you've got something that's very compelling and if you actually get the affiliate cash tree PDF, I believe it's on my site for free. Um, if not, I can send it to you. It, it, but it, it actually has exactly the mindset. You know, like it's it's totally drills down to like what kind of name you should use. Um, you know, and like because we've seen success with different names. You know, like not changing anything but the name of the person who's sending this out. You know, mm -hmm. like like you know Julie has a higher conversion than. Um, you know, Martha, you know, or what, you know, I mean, that's ob pretty obvious, but um, it's, it's just interesting. Like the name of a person, um, I give away a lot of copywriting tips on how to, um, you have to forget everything you know about English and proper sentence structure and, you know, 
all that mm. stuff because honestly I failed English in high school. I never really did well in college. And, you know, it's only over the last couple of years I've actually gotten good at, you know, the difference between there, there, and there, and how to use apostrophes and stuff like that. But the thing is, it doesn't matter. Like, people read my blog more, way more than people that are grammar monkeys and spell everything right. <laughs> so it pisses them off, you know, but it's it doesn't matter. Like, good content is good content. And it doesn't matter if it has typos or whatever. It just right. has no impact, you know, so... Um, it's, mm-hmm. it's just one of those things. Um, so yeah, just to answer your question, I've, I, as an affiliate have evolved more into collecting the emails, building a relationship with those people. And then just like in the dating industry, just walking them through setting up a profile, simple, super simple. And then, mm-hmm. so like, let's, okay. So just, I'll give you a run through real quick. So one, it's like, Hey, I'm whatever, you know, I, I, here's my free guide. I hope you enjoy it. I spent time on it. Email two is like, Hey, you know, just real quick. I wanted to walk you through setting up your profile on eHarmony. Boom, 13 bucks. Right. And then it's like now, you know, and then it's like, you know, Hey, if you had trouble here, the next one's like a follow up. The next one is like, you know, Hey, there's a different one out there for those of you, you know, into this demographic or looking for dates, you know, and who's not like, you know, and, you know, and it's like now, you know, I, this one's a little bit different when you set up your profile and mate one, you know, you want to watch out for this. Cause it seems like, you know, and it's just like, you can zing. I mean, not only do you get one on one person, you can average like two or three. So, to answer your question, how fast should people see results? Because I'll digress on everything. Um, is I mean, it's very soon. You know, I mean, it depends on your. So, like, you can do a post on Facebook, get people to opt in, right? Or wh- however you want to get traffic. If you want to post it on Craigslist date, you know, whatever, you'll probably get banned, but you get you get some leads in there, right? Of right. like, you know, you could just post on Craigslist and say like, you know, and and again, this is a little sketchy, but. You know what? Like people out there who don't have money, you know, to try it. If this is what it takes to get started, then whatever. You know, um, you don't have really anything to lose except <laughs> being, being able to post on Craigslist. Uh, so, but you could just go in there into like the men looking for. I mean, women looking for men or men looking for women, and just say, "Man, you know, I, I'm I'm actually looking for somebody, but I found this is a really cool guide." You know, it's like it's super non-intrusive. And you're not really saying to do this. And you can even say, like, what it, you know, it just, I was really surprised. I mean, you see everywhere for these affiliates that are doing, like, learn two weird tricks, you know, and right, what, right, right. whatever. I mean, that stuff works. And it was like, you know, if you were to just post on, that's how Next Pimp really grew, is I participated in forums and just talk with people. I spent no money. Um, that's the thing, is like, answering your question on how fast, because I get a lot of emails on, I have no money. How do I make money? I have no money. And I and I send them to this page, um, which is like when I was I was actually pinned down on stage. Um, and this might answer your question. And it's a it's an article I wrote because I spoke at the University of Nebraska here. And during that talk, you know, of course, somebody says, all right, I want to make money tonight and I don't want to spend any money. All right. So I'm like, OK, well, I'm going to I'm going to show you guys something sketchy that will work, but. Don't, I'm not advising you do it. I just want to show you because we got 20 minutes left, right? So I, I'm like, okay, I, I take just a random girl out of there. I have her go grab my commission junction link for this insurance one page submit. Pays five bucks. Um, I had her go on Craigslist and post in the general forum for a major city. Had a lot of traffic that just said, you know, hey, do you guys think this site is legit? for car insurance because I, I tried it and, you know, the, the reduced rate was – didn't seem realistic. Okay. So well, so then, like, <laughs> she sat down and I talked more and then um, I showed the results and it, it had made 10 bucks. I had two people sign up, right? And I said, there you go. There's 10 bucks. Look how fast that was. Look how easy that was. And guess how much money we spent? Nothing. Now I said, now, if you do that a lot, you know, they're not going to pay you. Because you're spamming Craigslist. And also, right. you're going to lose your Craigslist account. But my point was, is like, just if that's what inspires you to try it. I mean, you know, like, I've, I've just talked about a couple things or give people a couple things. And those people have gone on now. It might be 1% of those people. Um, but, you know, you know, if that's what it takes to, like, show people how it works and to get them fired up about it and to become super affiliates and change their life, then... 
whatever. Some people judge me and say, you're teaching people sketchy shit. And I'm like, I don't know. You know what? I'm, <laughs> I'm me. I'm just talking. Here's a thing. Do what, you know what you want with it. Ah, uh, interesting. Yeah, and then I think I think a lot of people kind of know you for your informational products as well too. Is that is that a big chunk of your business? And like, how did you get into that? So the info product, um, the shoe money system, was huge for us um, in a spurt. I mean, we were processing, eh, you know, thousand orders a day um, when we got into wow. the CPA networks. Um, you know, it, we reduced the cost a lot. It didn't last. It was very spurt. We came in at the right time when the FTC was taking down everybody. And, you know, the, the frustration to me is that we had to sink to a level of the guys who, I mean, don't get me wrong. We made enough to buy an island off of that. But at the same time, we had to sink down to a level that I just wasn't comfortable with, you know, with some of the claims we make. And even though it was compliant, I just – and actually, we, it wasn't really – I mean, there's nobody who wrote anything negative about it. I mean, you know, for us selling 40,000 products, there's three complaints on a Better Business Bureau or maybe there's six, you know. But, I mean, if you look at how – the volume of that product or there's – I think there's one thing on Ripoff Report that some person I – mean, like, yeah. you know. But, I mean, that's – pretty and you have to dig to find that i mean it's not like anywhere on the first five pages of google but you know i mean so anyway the thing i'm i'm i think i'm trying to get to is like you have to be careful because and not to get greedy um you know i saw it i was like all right you know the people that were helping us do the the conversion guys you know were helping us do it and we're like well here's other ones that work you know and i was like well let's try it we're not having any money but i just wasn't comfortable in the way it was positioned you know it's kind of was positioned like i'm going to show you how google will give you a job right mm -hmm. and i do you know and it, but i didn't like that and so i killed it um and it's prime just because i just wasn't comfortable with it and now the the problem is is that even though i've got and this is going to sound egotistical, but it's just a fact. I've got, like, a lot of credibility, right? I've done a lot of things. And my product is amazing. But I'm competing against guys that are in Costa Rica or Israel or, you know, and nothing against those countries. But, um, you know, they don't, they're not so worried about the United States FTC. Right. They're not worried at all. Um, so they can do, like, the sketchiest stuff. And that's my competition. Well, I can't compete with that. So how do I compete with that? doing things that they can't do, right? So showing them my segments on Good Morning America, talking about what you talked about when I was named the most influential person on the internet, but really explaining how that worked. Mm -hmm. And because it wasn't just like, I mean, there was people like Ashton Kutcher on that list and Britney Spears and Shaquille O'Neal. But if you notice, the top 10 on that are all internet marketers. Mm -hmm. And the reason one is that contest was just really influenced, like who can get people to accomplish a goal. Right. And, you know, that's what we do. You know, and so I sent out to my list and I said, hey, here's a – and I didn't say go do it. I said, you know, Fast Company said for everyone that enters, if you refer people, then you get credit and you get credit for the people that they refer. And I said, you know – and they said everyone who takes part will put their picture in the magazine. And it might be microscopic because we're going to have millions of entries. But <laughs> – and so what I told my people is I said, look, this is a cool deal, you know, because – you're always going to be able to see, say, as seen in Fast Company magazine. What's more compelling than that? So I sent a lot of people to do it. You know, Ashton Kutcher tweeted once about it, and Britney Spears was just like, hey, go sign up for this because I want to be influential, whatever. Well, they don't know how to sell anything on the internet. So that's why all the top ones were internet marketers. And, I mean, if you really want to measure influence, I can move stuff. You know, I have a lot of followers, and... But I can tell a story about why you should do it, which is a key point um, in about anything is people don't care what you're selling or what your product is. It's why you're selling it. And so right. you tell a story around it, you kill it. Great advice. So that, that'd be, would that be an, uh, an advice you would give to newbie entrepreneurs to learn to tell stories? What was that? Which, which, is that a, something that you would tell to newbie entrepreneurs to learn to tell stories? For people who, like I say, my English is horrible. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I mean, people in third world countries write better than I do. 
And <laughs> um, so it's, I would say for people starting out, I mean, there's so many people that come to us, even large companies that say, you know, nobody reads our blog. How do you get people to read your blog? Mm. And I, and I would say like, just be yourself. Like, don't try to break news. Don't try to be politically, don't try to be something you're not. That's the point I'm trying to make. And like, you know, I've written about pretty intense stuff. You know, I wrote one thing about Mark Zuckerberg's penis one time and I was, I was, <laughs> I was peeing next to him. You know, when I was nominated for this award that he was as well, and we were in the bathroom, and I was peeing next to him, and he was leaning back, and I said, you know, I, I looked at his penis. You know, I'm just saying, <laughs> you know, would you look? And that was, I took a poll on it, and it was funny, right? And although some people said they were offended by it, it doesn't matter. <laughs>